here with the person that makes the most money on YouTube. Is that true? No, no. Explain what I mean by that. Well, Fadi has helped me realize that I have one of the highest CPMs on all of YouTube because he's seen the back end of some of the biggest creators. Jordan Welch is not only a big YouTuber, he's also a great entrepreneur that runs multiple businesses. He's only 24 years old, but super successful. And in this interview, he shares the principles that help him achieve his success so young. But also he shares the dark side of money and fame. And on 1 million views, I make around $3,000. And on 1 million views, you make around $22,000. Yeah. This is crazy. But I think it's a little harder for me, at least to pull a million views compared to some of the you know, content that, that you're creating. I think uh -oh. your content appeals to a wider audience. You know, my goal now is to figure out how can I take this content and make it go broad and go wider. And you've actually helped me a lot with that. Tell us, like, how, why you have the, why you think you have the most CPM on YouTube? Well, I think it's simple. So the nature of my content is about business and finance. And the thing that dictates a higher CPM on YouTube is the quality of the advertisements that people can put on your video. And I think that the Shopify, one of the main things I'm known for, drop shipping, investing crypto those are some of the niches that companies spend the most on advertising in so i think that's the reason why i have a higher cpm um, but what would you say i mean you know a lot about youtube so <laughs> this podcast is not about me it's about, i know but i'm always trying to learn from you, it's, you know? it's about to learn from you so i'm going to reverse the question okay, okay. to learn more about like Tell me how you started doing the content that you make and like how you did you got into all these things that uh, lead to making like so much money on YouTube and all your other business and how you started everything. Well, I originally started on YouTube as a young kid around 11 years ago, just making little videos with my friends. But after a couple of years of doing that, it wasn't doing much for me financially. And it got to the point where I was like, you were making business content or no? No, not at all. We were <laughs> at, 11, yeah, at 11 years old. <laughs> Let me teach you how to invest your money. No, it was like we did skateboarding and gaming and skits and no structure to it. No algorithm. Literally just let's have let's have fun. We were just having fun. Um, after that though, I got interested into business because I met at what age around 13, 14 years old, because oh. I, and you were making fun of yourself at 11 that you can't do business <laughs> in three years, you got into business so. kind of indirectly <laughs> though. I found out about making money online through video games because I used to play call of duty a lot and I would meet these kids that were making money playing call of duty. Whoa. So that was what really the mean? intro to how me. they were making money playing call of duty. Like. 10 years ago yeah so there was this thing how old that was, are you now i'm 24 whoa, whoa. yeah so there was this thing ago. that was really popular called trick shotting it was basically like if you're really good at the game you would do like these fancy tricks in the game and post them on youtube and they would go viral so i was meeting kids that were getting 10,000 views a video 20,000 views a video making ad revenue from if you remember like machinima partnerships and stuff like that on youtube I and have also no idea what you're talking about but <laughs> somebody will know the audience knows machinima was like one of the first partner networks but they would also have clans like teams like phase clan for example the biggest and was the biggest at the time that would pay people to edit their videos so i actually got started making money online editing videos for a trick shotting clan Oh, wow. So that industry existed 10 years ago? Yeah. FaZe Clan has been around for a long time. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So, and how it evolved with that, the business thing? Yeah, for sure. So I just said that to show you how I got started. But, you know, in between that and now, um, in high school, I started a bunch of different businesses that failed. Clothing brand, reselling sneakers. I hosted a sneaker convention where people could trade their shoes. I did tech support. B by the way, we are going to get to how much money you sold to one of your Shopify stores? Uh, it's not public. Oh, it's not public. I, so we don't, I, I, I don't share that number. Okay, cool, cool. I'm sorry. But he, he shared, uh, he sold his Shopify store yes, and sir. we're going to get, by, and he made a lot of money with that. Yeah, and we good. are going to go to that inter later. But yeah, continue with your story. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, man. And at that point, I reached the end of high school. None of my businesses had succeeded. And I went to college. And in college, I realized this is not what I want to do whatsoever. And in the first... You, you, you're a border, a border a college. Where did you went to college? In Florida? Yeah, in Florida. Florida Gulf Coast University. Kind of a smaller school. 
I didn't try very hard in high school, so I wasn't able to get into like the good colleges. So yeah, I just got into wherever I could. So got, can you describe me? You hated school. Like a little you, bit. What you were doing at school, you were like you sitting on the chair and thinking about that. And you were playing. You were a bad student. You were like making fun of the teachers. What was? Well, you know, I wasn't Jordan. the worst student, but I definitely didn't take it very seriously because I felt a lot of the time that it was a waste of time. A lot of the things that we were learning, I knew that I wasn't going to be using them later on in my life. I never like failed classes, but at the same time, I was never a straight A student. So I didn't take it very seriously. The whole time that I was in high school, I would be excited to go home and do my business stuff and go play my video games and go mess around and shoot my videos. And thankfully, my high school was an arts school. So there was actually a class that I had every single day called TV production where we did the school news. And that was the thing I was the most excited for every single day. I was the the producer, like the main director of the whole news. So I basically ran the news channel at my school for so that, four years. That was how you got some video experience and some of this stuff. Definitely. That gave me a lot of video editing experience that taught me about uh, we used to create like these little segments for the news. So I was making so videos were, every week. You were finding opportunities in school to, yeah. to use school to learn and do stuff. Yeah, but at the time, I wasn't really thinking of it like that. I was just genuinely having fun making videos with my friends. And it was cool because we would premiere our videos on the news, which every kid at the school had to watch the news. So like we could put whatever we wanted on okay. the news. So we would make all different types of videos. Like I made music videos and comedy skits and commercials. You and were in, an actor in the videos uh, you were doing? You know? I was usually not behind or in front of the camera, actually. I, so I would you say were 90... doing the videography and the editing? Yes. I a bit filmed. of the ideation and stuff? I was like behind the scenes on all the videos. I was in a couple of them, but I was behind the scenes of all the videos. Okay. Yeah. So you understood there that there is something about this industry or it was just casual? It was just fun, man. And, you know, so that's you where it started. So you didn't hook from the... Uh, that was the point that you understood that you wanted to be a creator or it was not obvious back then? I had a lot of love for it, but I didn't know at that time that it could be a career because in the past I had failed at YouTube. Okay. Oh, so you, but because you were doing videos from 12, the skateboarding stuff, you had passion for kind of from these things. Absolutely. So it showed in the news when you created more and you evolved kind of your passion. Definitely. I was doing film festivals. We were entering all type of competitions. I was winning too. I won four different film festivals while I was in high school. Oh. I got a free iPad, free camera, a couple That's bucks, cool. you know, like, so. Okay. So you, you were learning about this stuff online? Or? Yes. I learned a lot from YouTube, almost everything. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I, what age you started at the actual the business stuff that you like after school? What uh, stuff you did? So after my first year of college, I realized that that was not the thing that I wanted to do. So I spent that whole entire summer trying to figure out ways so I don't have to go back to college the next year. Oh. And okay. that's where I actually started my first Shopify store was during that summer after my first year of college. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So you are an amazing person in business and you know a lot of stuff and you know a lot about YouTube and you are an amazing person. I'm very curious to learn from you. So about business and how you evolved as a business person and let's continue with that journey that we had uh, before. So okay, at cool. eight, 19, you said you started, you finished high school and then what? Yeah, so in that, I went to college, like I said, and I took the first year of college very seriously because I just wanted to see if it was possible for me to not be a bad student. So I did end up getting straight A's the first year, and by the end of the year, I realized this was a waste of time. I put all this effort in, I studied every day, I got straight A's, and I realized it was not worth my time. So that first semester after I finished, I focused on building a business. When I went to school, I got a student loan. And what happens with student loans is if you don't use all the money, they give you back some of the money in form of a refund check. So I literally got like $2,000 after my first year of college. You're supposed to keep that money and use it for books and room and board and housing and all that stuff. But I was just like, I can use this to start a business. Uh, can you explain me again? Because I'm a specific, uh, maybe I was not following that I, that I your thought. How you got that money? What is the service that the government provides to get that money? You don't go to college and you, or you go to college and they pay you? What's so the when I went to school, 
I had a loan that covered my rent for my uh, dorm room and my tuition. What dorm room means? In- uh, where you live on campus. Okay. Like your, your housing. Mm-hmm. And I didn't end up using all of that money for the year. So whatever's left over, they give okay. it to you in a check. You're supposed so, to keep that. So you school. went to university? Yeah. Cool. Got you. And then I used that money to start my first Shopify business. And you didn't use all the money, so you, a lot of money left, and you used to, to buy, start the Shopify business. How did you start it? How did you learn about Shopify? Well, I learned about Shopify. This was in 2017, so a lot in has happened. Be- in the beginning of Shopify, millionaires and this... this it was pretty early on in the whole Shopify dropshipping world. I was learning about it through YouTube. I was learning about it through Facebook groups. That was big at the time. I was asking a lot of questions in there. And I was learning through trial and error. Me and a friend at the time, his name is Shay, we had started the store together. And every day we were just experimenting. So we were launching Facebook ads. We were building different websites and just trying our best to get this business off the ground. Okay. So uh, h- how much time it took you to make money with dropshipping? I didn't make money with my first dropshipping store until about three months. After three months, I had my first product that was making me some profits every month. But how did you start that selling stuff or like how you were marketing, promoting the thing? Facebook ads, like what was your thing that you were doing? Yeah, so basically we would find... Pro- By the way, you are teaching people how to do that and you like, this is one of the most knowledgeable guys on Shopify that they, they he knows how to explain it and he did it himself. He sold a Shopify store. So you are qualified for me to be asking you all these questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so. I guess a little bit, you know, people come up to me and they say, oh, you're the dropshipping guy. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, basically what we did is called dropshipping. It's not innovative. It's not like the fir- I'm the first one to do it. But at the time, because I didn't have a lot of money, I couldn't order inventory of products. So we would go on AliExpress. You know AliExpress? Yes. We would go on AliExpress and we would find products that looked cool. They looked like they had potential to sell. We would put them on our website. We would run Facebook advertisements to our website. And when we would and get you a... had to any web, uh, you had to be skilled to do Facebook advertising or uh, to do it right or anybody can do Facebook. Advertising. Well, I had an advantage because prior to that, like I told you, I was doing videos. So mm-hmm. I had a strong understanding of how to edit videos. I also had spent so much time on the internet that I had a basic understanding of marketing. You know how it is when you spend a lot of time on the internet, you see a lot of headlines, you see a lot of memes, you see a lot of stuff. So it's easier for you to kind of get a grasp on making a somewhat viral piece of content. I still had to learn and I'm still learning to this day, but being able to edit videos gave me an advantage that a lot of people don't have when they start learning how to run ads. Okay, yeah. so uh, three months in, you made your first profit. And you went, uh, just to rephrase what you did, you went on AliExpress, you found a product that is cool and you think it will work, people will want it. You ran ads with good promotion because you knew about video, you made like cool videos and like cool stuff for people to be interested in the product. Yes. And then? Well, that was when we had our first somewhat successful product. Some, what some were successful? Meaning uh, at that point, I had a product that was making me 30000 a month in revenue, which translated to around like 5 k a month in profit. But at that time, that was the most money that I had been making. So I was excited about it, you know? The way that I actually took it to the next level, getting past $100,000 a month in revenue. How much you made uh, on the first three months? Uh, uh. I really lost money in the first three months yeah, yeah, altogether. Yeah. Okay. But by the end of the first three months, I had my first product that was making some profit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, I was able to take that little bit of profit and continue to reinvest it back into the business. And I changed my strategy up. Instead of me finding products that I thought were cool, I just started to focus on stuff that was already trending, products that were already making money. Interesting. And, and improving how did you them. found those Well, you could find them just from being on social media, right? The biggest products that I ever sold, I found them on Instagram, just scrolling, on Facebook, just scrolling. Ads, or you just saw them on videos? Yeah, most of the time it was ads. Ads. So you are, oh, that's interesting. You are checking all the ads. So that, oh, wow. That means that all the people that 
were spending money on that, they were probably making money with that product to be sustainable and for you to be able to see it. Exactly. So you were getting the win. Wow. You are getting the winning products by just watching and consuming the ads. Yes. And you could see. Is that right? Yes. You could see which ones were doing better, obviously, by the engagement, too. You can see what people say in the comments. You can tell which ones are having bot comments, just like random comments, you know, and the ones that actually had the legit comments. So fuck. that's how I found my first 100K a month product was through that. 100K a month, what does that mean? Uh, that's 100K a month in revenue. In revenue? Yeah. Uh, in revenue, you mean you, not profit? No, not profit. Okay. And how much the profit was so, on that? By the end of 2017, the best month they ever had with dropshipping was around $20,000 in profit. Okay, but which, an average month uh, back in 2017? Um, an average month in the end of the year when things started going good, every month had been over $100,000 a month. And I actually have a video on my channel called like my first year on Shopify where I show all this. So if anybody wants to go verify those numbers, they're all there. And I'm not the best with remembering numbers. So... Uh, if you ask me like specific, yeah, yeah, what was December 2017? Yeah, yeah. I probably can't tell. And you, come on, man! If you say one number like it was 20,000, it was 10,000. Nobody. Well, you know, people people are always looking for a reason to like say this guy is whatever. Not me in, in particular, but you know how it is. So I just want to put that out there. Yeah, it's interesting with that space. There is so many people scamming. That's what I'm trying stuff. to say. So like, I just want to say that all my yeah. numbers are out there. You can go verify them. You know? Interesting. So let's continue. Like you made your one product got you to 100,000 per month or it was multiple products. So in 2017, I had four products that started making money. Um, what would happen is I would get a product that would get some sales and then it would die off. And then I would get another product that would get some sales and then it would die off. And that continued w to happen. Why do you think it was dying off? Like someone else was uh, promoting it? Some, you know, like, what do you think? Where the products so were dying? At the time, that was sort of my strategy was to take a product, get as much as I can out of it, and then move on to the next one. In hindsight, what I should have done was actually take those products that were successful and turn them into brands. Meaning that I built a store entirely focused around that product and focus my energy entirely on that instead of just trying to chase the next rabbit or chase the next opportunity. That's interesting because you eliminate the failures and like the pro time to find new product and test them and do all this stuff. You just focus on building trust with one product. That's with, the difference uh, with what I did with my most recent Shopify product. With my most recent Shopify brand, I was able to sell the same product for over two years and sell the company the, at the same end. product and I, that's why you were so you were able to sell that and make a lot more sell that and make a lot more money yeah so after four years in shopify stuff uh, so i had the, the the first shopify store 2017 and pretty much the majority of 2018 but around that same time i started doing youtube again this time i started because people saw me from my hometown making money on the internet because I would post on my story and stuff like that. So I wanted to make videos explaining what I did. And if you watch those first videos, they're not optimized. They don't have crazy thumbnails. The first one is literally called, what is e-commerce? And it's a video of me with a laptop and a webcam. And I'm just on a PowerPoint explaining to people what e-commerce is. That was where the roots of my channel started. And it started getting views or no? Eh, not really. Yeah, okay. like 100 views, 200 views. The way that I got to my first thousand subscribers was actually I would post these videos in Facebook groups. So basically, like I said, I was using Facebook groups all the time to learn how to do drop shipping. And now that you, I was you making, found that interesting, Facebook groups actually teach you how to make drop shipping. Yes, because it was a community of other people that were doing it. And I think for people that are just getting started, whether it's YouTube or business, you need to be in a community of people that are doing the same thing because it'll show you that one, it's possible. And two, it will show you where you can improve because you can actually talk to people like having people like you around helps me so much because it actually gives me motivation and allows me to bounce ideas. So I had that same thing with dropshipping very early on. And you built that now with other people. Are you still doing that? You still have people in your community teaching them how to do dropshipping? Yes. Yeah, so I do have a community still. And uh, are they active uh, still on, on your community? That Definitely. Um, now we have uh, around 10,000 people on my Discord. Um, I have that, around a thousand people in wow. my private community. That's a lot of my ten thousand people. They are for those are free. not paying customers for free. They yeah, it's a free Discord. And, and then in the 10, private, ten thousand people. It's by the way, it's very interesting what you are doing because uh, 
um, I learned that uh, I am not converting as uh, as by selling merch and all this stuff. I know the YouTube stuff, but I don't know all this stuff. But what you are doing with having people on your Discord and all this stuff, this is what people told me to do, to just start interacting with my subscribers with one way or the other. I'm not saying that I'm going to do it, but this was the advice that Nas Daily and big people gave me. To, yeah, I feel like it's important to, to have a community, you know? Yeah. Um, just because at the end of the day, like, it's nice to have one place where all your people can learn from each other and meet each other and share their successes and failures together. Um, are you active in your Discord with the 10,000 people or you don't have the, too I, much? I pop in there, you know, like once a day I'll chat with the community. I don't answer like everybody's questions, you know, but I try my best. And I also have coaches inside of there. So there's a bunch of coaches in there that answer questions whenever you have them. That's only for the private part of the Discord. But regardless, whatever question you have, it'll get answered in the private so Discord. So how many people are in the private Discord? It's uh, It's over a thousand. Okay, yeah. so and they are all learning about dropshipping and they are finding people that do dropshipping and they are asking questions. What do you think about this ad? What do you think about this product and yes. all this stuff? Okay, okay. And how you find like people that so they pay how much they pay to get inside? 67 a month. 67 a month. Yeah. Oh, so it's a month. So if one month they don't find the board of the value that you are giving them. Yeah, they can go out. Yes, and I think that's important. You know, I like people to be engaged. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And what do you, how you, do you found them go like, you, they tell me some success stories. Tell me like probably with a lot of courses, there is a like majority of the people they are failing and they are not doing what they are supposed to do and the yeah. stuff that you. What was your experience with that? I mean, we have a ton of success stories. You could go to my Instagram and in the Instagram highlights, I have three full highlights of testimonials from people that have either watched my videos, found some value and started a business or went in one of my products, found some value and started a business. Even today, somebody came up to me at this conference we're at Vid Summit, and he told me, man, I started watching your videos in 2020 during the pandemic. I was literally in debt when I started watching the videos and now I'm doing Shopify and he pulled out his phone and he showed me like an $86,000 month, you know, like people really come up to me on the street and tell me these stories. So it's one thing when you get it in the DM, but it's another thing when I go outside and like people are really telling me, yo, bro, you helped me get started with my business. And now my business is making a million dollars a year. Like that puts the biggest fire under me more than anything else, because you know, I have had some okay numbers in business, but to actually have an impact and get other people started in business is like better feeling than the success that even I've had with my own stores. Do you think that Shopify is like uh, still easy to do it, or it becomes more and more difficult as the competition goes and as more people understand the opportunity there, or you think there is a huge market that no? I don't think it was ever easy. I think it's been hard the whole time. I know what you're asking, though, is that is it getting harder now that more people are doing it? Yeah. I think that the challenge does increase. I think it's more important that you get better at becoming a good marketer, better content creator, learning more about selecting the right products. I think it is important now to actually be better. I think that it is harder than it was maybe five, six, seven years ago when less people were doing it. Because right now, Shopify and dropshipping is one of like the hottest or most known about businesses to start online. But it's for a good reason. Lots of people have been able to make their living off of that business opportunity. So it's similar to YouTube. It gets more and more competitive. You have to up your quality and your skills. Yes. But there is always the opportunity. There. Such is the case with anything else. You want to be a baseball player? It was probably easier to be a professional baseball player 50 years ago, 40 yeah. years ago than it is today. And you know? MMA fighter is probably hardest than ever to exactly. be. Exactly. Because people are training 20 years exactly. to do this. Okay, that's interesting. So that's... Uh, and. Uh, I'm curious to see why you can't, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to push on anything, but I'm curious to see why you can't say exactly how much money you made on your Shopify store. There is like a, a no, I can tell you how much I made on the store. I can't tell you how much I sold the store for because part of the contract, okay. there was a non-disclosure on the amount because okay. the business is still active. And oh, so people can't, uh, what, what, why, why does this is helpful for the, the person that bought your business? To, for you to not be able to say the number 
Well, I mean, that's just one of the things he asked me for. Okay. Um, he knew who I was when I sold the business, and that was one of the things he asked me for. Oh. He asked me, please don't share the amount that you got for this business. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So uh, and how, how everything evolved uh, with YouTube, and you, you slowly, slowly transition with Shopify. Yes. And you were doing more and more YouTube, and I was I'm curious to see if you found more joy or it was more money or if you found like and why you started shifting now you are doing probably full-time YouTube or, and just maybe as a hobby Shopify or something or I don't know like tell me what your thoughts on that much but, more joy and fulfillment from creating content because the truth is when I look at my life that is the thing that I started with above anything else and that is the thing that I always had a passion for. I think my desire to make money came from growing up with my mother and seeing how much money was a problem for us and seeing her struggle to get to work every single day. I won't even say that my mom struggled because she actually did it super strongly and really showed up with a strong face every day, woke up, went to work 7 a.m. But I saw how hard that was. And it made me realize at a very young age how important it was to make money. I think that's where my desire to be a businessman came from. But I think my real passion lies in creating art. You know what I mean? My real passion lies in making content and telling stories and really just having fun with that whole process. I'm having a lot of fun with it lately. You, you spoke about the, your mom. So you didn't grow up with your father? No. Can you touch a bit on that or... So I can say that my biological father is still around. He's still alive. But we did not have much of a relationship growing up at all. Um, ultimately, you know, I don't want to get too much into it because it's a very personal thing for me. But he did not do my mom right. When, 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 you know, when it started and it was time for me to be around, it wasn't like he was there, you know? Okay, cool. So the, the YouTube, uh, thing, uh, that you are doing now, like how, so when it started be, becoming successful, I'm curious to see what was the first time that you're like, oh yeah, this is a full time thing that I'm focused on uh, so in your thing. And like, when you, when you, did you reach your first, uh, like, 10,000 subscribers and how much time it took you to grow to 100,000 and like yeah. grow more and more. So I really walk me th through your journey, baby, your yeah, YouTube man. journey. Yeah, YouTube is what I get the most excited about talking <laughs> about. So listen, I No, you were excited before as well. No, I'm, 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 I'm excited, <laughs> but I love talking about YouTube. Um, so really in that time of having my Shopify store, I was able to get to my first 10,000 subscribers, my first Shopify store. So 2018 to 2000, um, I mean, 2017 to 2018 was around the time I got my first 10,000, but I was doing YouTube very differently than I'm doing it now. I was posting three videos a week and it was like very niche content, like not just how to start your own Shopify store, but like how to track your profits on your Shopify dashboard. Like oh, just like tiny, tiny, tiny niche content. And okay. That's what got me to my first 10,000 subs, but it was a super grind. So you were solving all the Shopify problems. Like if you th saw that it's a struggle with one p problem or if you thought that people will have the same problem then you were making a video about that. Yes. And it, it got me to a certain level. Not only was I able to get my first 10K subs, but I launched a, a course at the time. I did a little bit of coaching. So that opened up some income for me. And even at the level of like 10,000 subscribers, I was so making... How much money you were making? With yeah, 10, I was 000. making around like 30K a month from YouTube. And with, like, with AdSense or with the coaching as no, well? No, with AdSense, I was making like 500 bucks a month. Okay. A thousand bucks on it. So you were making month. with 10,000 subscribers, $30,000. Yeah. Because you were coaching people how to do dropshipping, all this. And stuff. I had a digital product, a, a course. And you had a course. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. With 10,000 subscribers. This is, I was just giving you a quiz. 10,000 subscribers, you were making $30,000. Yeah, and I think a lot more creators can do the same thing. I think a lot of times creators get too wrapped up into trying to make all their money off brand deals and AdSense. But actually being able to launch a product is the thing that will make you the most money. And digital products are the best way to do it because they have 100% margin, meaning all profit. That's crazy. So yeah. $30,000 uh, and how did it evolve from, that, from there? Well, 
it didn't stay at 30,000 because no I'm not only talking about the money I'm talking about the subscribers the 10,000 subscribers how it evolved how you shifted your content and uh, all the story going yeah so forward. the channel side sort of flatlined um, around like the end of 2018 around 2019 because at that time I had stopped running my first Shopify store that business because I was constantly testing new products switching out new products that business just did not it was not able to sustain and eventually it died down so i was making great money like i just told you from coaching and from youtube so i was like sticking with that and i was doing that and you know i had my first like six figure net profit year in 2018 i moved to los angeles like i thought i was lit i thought my life was, was great but by the end of the year like um, my youtube channel was not growing at all i was posting three videos a week so that means i was running out of ideas and it got to the point where I was just like, I don't love these videos at all anymore. Like I'm over it. So I stopped, which kind of slowed down all the income that I was making at the time, you know? So because my store stopped, I wasn't feeling as good about making Shopify videos. You, t you told uh, maybe I heard you on time. You said that you were in Los Angeles and like, you were like at the lowest point, a very low point with money, with uh, your, how you felt with yourself. Can you get more? Yes. On this topic. So what happened was at the end of 2018, I had stacked up my first hundred thousand dollars and I thought that everything was cool. Right. But then going into 2019, I was living in California. So I got that California tax bill, which is not pretty. And then on <laughs> top of that, you know, I was living a somewhat expensive lifestyle. I had a three thousand dollar a month apartment, had a six hundred dollar a month car payment with insurance. I was going to dinner all the time and I wasn't making that much money anymore. So I decided to launch a new business, which ended up being a software company. And I came to find out that software is not uh, cheap to build, nor is it an easy business to start. What type of company is that? It's called Viral Vault. It's the company that I still run to this day. Uh, basically, it's the all-in-one toolkit for anybody looking to start their own Shopify store. We provide product recommendations, training, and a community of other entrepreneurs that are doing the same thing, along okay. with coaching. So I started that business and I started it with a friend of mine at the time and we grew it to around like $20,000. That's about how much money we had. And it was a disagreement that I had with that business partner about the future of the company. And the business partner did me very wrong because he took all the money and he ran away with it. The problem with that was we were planning on using that money to develop our app. So now I had announced to my team that we were going to build this new app. And I had to tap. Man, I'm very excited that you are touching into this stuff because people are sharing success stories and success stories, and like it's hard to find this stuff. Was that one person stole money from you and left? Yes. And you were like, "Fuck! Where is the capital now to continue?" Exactly. I mean, I <laughs> and had. And you had this expensive lifestyle that you. Were... <laughs> exactly. I had built up this lifestyle, and also now we had a plan to build the app officially. What we were using before was like what's called a minimum viable product. So I created something very cheap just to test the idea. And the people loved it to the point where we were able to make some money off of it. But now we wanted to reinvest it and make it in something legit. But that costed a lot of money. So I couldn't use the money now that I had saved up in that business. So I had to come out of pocket. And overall, I ended up spending over $40,000 to build this project. And I don't know if you can run some simple math here, but I was running pretty low on money in Los Angeles. And when I launched this business, I expected it to be like confetti and like I'm back up financially. Everything's good again. But the business launch official was not what I expected it to be. And essentially, it gave me just enough money to maintain my life in L.A., but I was not making new money. And I wasn't doing YouTube anymore, nor was I doing Shopify. Why you stopped doing YouTube? Because I was so focused on building this app, I didn't have the bandwidth to do YouTube. Because the person left you and you were alone and you were like... Team, there was a team of four. So I was leading the team. I was, making, I was getting the app developed. And with, did your di channel die? Yeah, it felt like it died. It felt like it died. Honestly, at that time, I never thought I was going to be able to grow my channel past where it was at. And I think it had like 18,000 subscribers. I thought it was dead forever. So yeah, at that point, 2020 rolls around. I am down bad. Pretty much like, I think I had like $15,000, something like that. And I know people are going to be hearing that like, <gasps> 15,000? <000? gasps> and he was down. 
<laughs> but like, yo, I'm having expenses that are around $10,000 a month. And then I have business expenses that are around $5,000 a month. So I'm like one month runway. You know what I mean? Like if one month of, if the business, if, if you were told me these things one year ago, I was going to say, think that you are stupid, but now that I, you can, understand, I, I got to understand a bit of the business side after so many mistakes. I understand what you're saying. Yes. You understand. So there is a silver lining to all this because I reached the summer of 2020. I actually reached the point where I ran out of money. Like I could afford my next rent payment, but barely. So I was like, it's done. I, I, I canceled my lease in this luxurious apartment I had. Um, I took my car and I put all my stuff in it and I shipped it back home. And I moved back to the house that I started at. I moved back to my mom's house um, in the summer of 2020. And this software... How, how you felt? You felt failure. You felt like um, this life sucks. You felt like... How Honestly, you felt? bro, I felt relieved because... I was feeling so bad in LA and I was feeling so stuck in that glass apartment that I just was like ready for a change. That you were always dreaming to get that apartment and to do all this stuff. Yeah. And you felt sick. Probably. I felt almost immediately better when I landed back home because it was like, whew. Okay, here we go. You know what I mean? Oh my God, you had a good story. Tell it. <laughs> you you <laughs> have me on it. It's with the you. truth, you know? <laughs> and my mom, you know, God bless her. She's the most beautiful woman in the world. I love her to death. When I landed back home, I had like six of my best friends there uh, surprising me at my house. Wow. Uh, I'm like, welcome back. You know, like I was welcomed back with love. And when I was in LA, I was single. I had, a, you know, good friends, but like I was in a dark place, dude. I felt like I was all alone, you know? So when I came back home, I was surrounded by love again. And um, at that time, like I, when I was in L.A., I was, I was, yeah, I was like smoking every day. I was smoking weed every single day. When I went back home, I, I, I made a promise to myself that I was going to give that up for the time. And um, yeah, I'm curious to hear a bit more about your L.A. lifestyle and like because I, I. I'm here. I was the, here for a lot of time. And I think there is potentially something wrong here. I'm not sure if it's only my experience. It seems like it was your experience. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on wh how, why you think you felt that way. Yeah, I think LA is a pretty dark place. And the reason for it is, is that there are some beautiful people here. There are some of the smartest people in the world here. Some of the most talented people in the world here. But on the flip side, There is a whole slew of people that are just craving to reach fame and to reach riches so much so that they will just do you wrong. And I think that that energy radiates through going to events and meeting certain people here. I don't want to talk down on the people of L.A. because I met some of my best friends in the whole wide world living in Los Angeles. But on that same side, man, I would agree with you in the way of the energy in L.A. For me personally, once it got to the end, it was bad. But that doesn't have to do as much with the city. It has to do more so with me and my life. And so I'm not gonna sit here. And like, I'm not gonna yeah, sit yeah. here and trash LA, yeah. bro. Like, I, I, no, I think what you said, I had that was a similar experience. We're not talking. We're not judging LA, or we're just sharing our personal experience, and it's for up to the people to judge. Yeah. from their experience. So, so, uh, I, I, what when you were saying that people are so desperate for success and money that they will do you wrong that, yeah. that felt right because I have the same experience here like everyone is trying to reach that thing that and it's and I'm I'm not going to lie I'm a similar way that I'm trying to but I, I would like to think that I would not do wrong to people to yeah. try to get to that point but it's it's very transactional it's very uh, yeah but I'm not sure maybe I, I'm I'm trying to find a place that I will, it will feel more like home. Yes. And I think the other reason, too, is that I'm literally from Florida. You know, you're from Cyprus. Like, we're not, we're not from this town, you know. So that's another thing, too, is like, how'd you feel? I know you don't want to turn on you, but like, how did it feel to actually go back to Cyprus having some success? What do you mean? Like, you left there hungry. I want to make it. I want to get some subscribers. I want to do something. And then you come back and it's like, Ah, okay. Like I'm back home now. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you probably found it, a new it, appreciation. It felt for amazing. It. Yeah, when that's I that's how I felt going back to Florida as well. I left Florida and I was like, oh, I need to get out of here. I need to go somewhere else. I need to go. 
And honestly, I probably did at the time. That's what God was telling me. That's what my intuition was telling me. That's what I probably needed to do at the time. But when I came back, I found love for my home state again. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's very important for us that we went through this experience. Yes. Because we saw the other side of the coin. Because uh, just us telling you guys our experience is like different because you experience it. You learn from it. You experience this world. You understand how this world works. So it's, it was very important that we went through. Definitely. I mean, through. I've had some of the crazy stories of my life living in L.A. And I've met some of my best friends living here. You know what I mean? So... I, I don't regret moving to LA at all. Yeah, but there is interesting thing. The thing about beautiful about life, you don't know what you are going to be doing if you were not doing that mm. thing. So maybe the alternative, we are so accustomed and we love our experience and we always think that the alternative was going to be bad because we're so accustomed to our experience. This yeah. is a whole world. And like, I'm, uh, it's interesting when you look at it. Yeah, with, I mean, this perspective. the only option we have is acceptance. <laughs> so to live and look at the past that didn't go as well and say, oh, I wish I would have did that better. All that's going to bring is just hurt and negative energy to your brain. So, so you went back. You got very welcome with your family and even you were not that great doing not doing great in business they were like you I, was, I was pretty low yes and once i got back um my first priority was of course like i said cutting out smoking so i felt like that was a really negative habit in my uh, life so you thought why i was bad yeah, because, because i was already down so i was doing something that was making me even more down you think and, uh smoking brings you down I think for the majority of people, yes, and they've become delusional to say that it doesn't because they do it every single day. I think that if you're not rich and you're just trying to get started in your career, uh, I think you shouldn't be doing that every single day. But who am I to say what anybody should do with their life? I just know from my experience alone that it has hurt me more than it has helped me. Okay, so you went back. Yeah, you so, gave up wheat. And I started focusing on the thing that got me started in the first place, which was Shopify and e-commerce. So I realized that this software company was not going to magically blow up overnight. And there's nothing else that I could do to get the business to grow. So I went back to my roots. It was like this deja vu moment. I'm back home on the same bedroom that I was sleeping in back in 2017. I'm working on the same shitty desk that I started at back then. And I'm just trying my best to get a Shopify store off the ground. The difference between back then to now is in the past, it took me three months. This time it took me three weeks to find my first profitable product. And I was, I remember just being so upset at myself for not having the vision to just do that when I was in LA. The problem when I was in LA was that because my expenses were so high and because everything was so chaotic, I didn't even have a second to like have a rational moment of thought. Oh my God. So it was that moment of coming back home, getting that relief, taking a breath and just saying, okay, dummy, like just do this thing that you know you can make money with. <laughs> that was the breakthrough for me. And literally, bro, within two months, I had gotten this store past $50,000 a month. I moved out of my mom's house again. I moved to Miami. And, you know, I, I, I mean, that was really the, the, where the tide turned in my life. Yeah crazy you had that uh, in front of your nose all the time the whole time be because you had some money uh, like you were stressed and like you're you were blind to see that that's the you this is the thing that you know how to do and you are and i think my ego was having a hard time allowing me to let this software business go for a moment because I had already put so much money into it and so much time that I was like, I have to make this work. I have to make this work. I have to make this work. But like sometimes in life, you do have to take steps backwards so you can move forward. Okay. That's interesting. So you gave, so it was, you were trying so hard to do that and you gave up YouTube. You gave up trying to do Shopify stores, the two things that you had love for. Yeah. And, you were trying to pursue that thing. And when you gave up for a certain period of time on that, you found that it... So sometimes giving up on stuff may, might be the wise option, you think? Yes, give up is the wrong term. I think it's more like pivot. You know what I mean? Because okay. like give up means like, Oh, I'm done with this forever. You know, For me, I never wanted to abandon that company because I had four full-time employees. 
So I, I couldn't really just say, all right, guys, you're all fired. But I want to give a big shout out to all my team, if any of them are watching this video, because there was a period of time where they worked for me for three months and they didn't get paid a dime because we didn't have the money to do it. And because they supported the team and the mission that we were on, they were OK with sticking around and not being paid. And for me, that's why this team is now paid extremely well. I have team members all around the world um, in India, in Uruguay, in Russia, in the United Kingdom. Um, and they're all doing well. They have apartments, they have cars, they take care of their families. They're good. And that's a good, uh, that means houses. That means that you are a good leader for them to stick there for three months and believe in your mission, even when they were not getting paid. Well, thanks, man. I mean, I try. I think they know that the mission of the company was more than anything to help people get started and inspire them as entrepreneurs. So I think, you know, we, we try to be pretty focused on that. So, yeah. So uh, moving forward with the, you went back, it clicked in your head, you started your uh, Shopify store and then. So in that year of 2020, I started the year at my lowest point by the end of the year. I had got my store to almost half a million dollars in revenue, but this time I did it differently. Revenue, you mean sales, sales, and it was around a hundred K in profit. And more importantly, I begun the process of actually building a brand instead of selling a bunch of random products. Okay. I had focused entirely. So when on you went this back, product. you said, okay, I'm going to build a brand now with the Shopify stuff. Yes. Learning from my past mistakes, you know? I started it the same way that I started the other business with testing products. But once I found the product that was doing well, then I said, okay, no more focus on this. And, and you had a lot more experience way more experience. with the software company, with managing people, with branding and business, because it was how, how long, how long ago it was that you came to LA? What was the gap? I would lived in LA for like two years. So, you know, that was two years of meeting millionaires and meeting Shopify store owners and hosting events and watching hella YouTube videos. And like, so yes, my experience and my knowledge grew immensely being in LA. Mm -hmm. So when it came time to do Shopify again, I was, I was a better person than I was the first time around significantly. Okay. And so of course the failures from the last business taught me a lot. Okay, yeah. and we, how that evolved? You were making money on Shopify? So. Yeah, so at the end of 2020, I started the YouTube channel up again with the same goal that I had before to share my journey on Shopify. But this time, I took the YouTube craft more seriously as well. And going into 2021, I wanted to have the biggest year of my life. And honestly, that was the breakout year for me in a variety of reasons. 2021. So, yeah, because... That year, I grew my Shopify store past 1.2 million in sales. I grew my YouTube channel to 250,000 subscribers. And I, I felt like I found me again. He was lost for a very long time. And I felt like I was able to come back to who I actually am. And I started to feel joy again about life. I started to wake up appreciated. I started to have more gratitude than ever before. And um, it, it was because of the money no. it was because of the subscribers it no. was because you felt that you are accomplished and your heart was like oh, i think i'm doing the right thing what why you think you felt that relief and you were not feeling that before i gave a lot of thought to this i think ultimately it was me being back in a state where i felt like i was living in line with my purpose i think that i was a little lost in la focused on making the right amount of money to survive but now that I had these things going, it made me connect to my purpose that I started initially, which was ultimately just to educate and inspire people. And with my YouTube channel, I was able to do that. All that I was doing in 2021, the whole year, was documenting my journey with as much transparency as possible. So I was sharing my YouTube, I mean, my Shopify journey. And you're giving up all the numbers and all this stuff, but not the products so people can compete with you. At first, I didn't share the product. Uh, because yes, I was a little worried about people cloning my store, but in the following year, I did actually reveal the product. So I revealed everything else though. I mean, every number, uh, I revealed how we did our ads, my full strategy, nothing was left out. You know, I tried to be as transparent as possible and I still do to this day. I, 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 I you know, I, I, anytime I say a number or I say something about sales and revenue, like I try to be pretty clear about showing that, you know? Okay. So how you were doing you were at that uh, stage 
but I, you forgot to tell me a bit more about the 10,000 to 250,000 transition. Definitely. Like how that breaking point happened, what was the changes that you made on the videos and how you approached it different this time? The biggest change that I did to go from 10,000 subs to 250 was actually respecting the game of YouTube and trying to learn how to make a great video. Before, I was trying to brute force my way to getting subscribers by just post, 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 without caring as much about the quality of the videos. This time around, I wanted to really understand about retention and packaging and how to actually make a story in a video that's entertaining. And for me, I was still making strictly educational content. So there was only so much of that that I could do, but I was still trying to learn as much as possible. So that's really the key, I think, for me at the time was just actually taking it very seriously, not just uploading videos, but trying to become a master of the YouTube craft. So and you were doing that by reading the retention graphs, trying to see what other people are doing successfully and like replicating. Really not the graphs, but the other thing you just said there, studying other successful YouTubers um, outside of my niche even. Like not always was I just looking at other Shopify guys. I was looking at other YouTubers like vloggers and different type of uh, interviewers and stuff like that. Different type of educational channels and trying to see what they were doing right that I could apply to my channel. Okay. Yeah. And let's go from 250,000. Now you have a lot more than that. Yeah. So how that transition and what clicked the year of 2022? I think the biggest thing was actually surrounding myself with other creators. And I'll tell you why, because being around people like you, especially you helped me so much with my YouTube channel without you. I don't think I would be where I'm at today. I think I would definitely still be making videos, but I think I would have a fraction of the subscribers I have today. Come on, shut up. I actually mean <laughs> it because the truth is, bro, I didn't know what I was doing wrong. It got to a point where I was making videos and I thought that I was doing like amazing stuff, but actually getting feedback from people that understand YouTube showed me where we can improve. So I would say actually being around other creators that weren't in my niche, but were very successful on YouTube helped me so much because it helped me expose what I could do differently. And the other thing that grew my channel a lot was I tried to think of how can I apply the viral YouTube principles that work to the business and finance industry because nobody else has really done that successfully. The only big YouTubers in the finance world are just educational. So like, how can we go more viral, trendy with business videos? If that makes sense. Okay, and uh, you're making business videos because why? Why you're making business videos? My mission statement with my channel is to inspire the current and next generation of entrepreneurs. I think me as a child, when I was 12 years old, I was- Father, I fucking love you. You are an amazing person. <laughs> Listen, bro, my, 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 myself at 12, I was watching these videos, bro. I was watching videos from people telling me how to make money online. And like, all I could find was like old white men and like random people that might have made some money, might have not made some money. My goal is to be a relatable figure that people can look to and say, oh, wow, if this kid coming from a small city, North Fort Myers, Florida, with a single mom who was making less than 20K a year can, you know, make a million dollars, multiple millions of dollars on the Internet. Not only that, but sharing the stories of these other kids and even men that have made millions of dollars on the Internet. OK, I can do it, too. And the proof is there because people come up to me and they literally tell me to my face, yo, because of your videos, I'm now making uh, or I'm now doing. Uh. Do you think everybody can do it? Be an entrepreneur and make money and become a millionaire. I think anybody can become an entrepreneur, but I don't think everybody is cut out for running like a mega business. Entrepreneur doesn't always mean millionaire. You know what I mean? Like there are people in towns all around the world that run general stores and they run taco stands and they might make two thousand dollars three thousand dollars a month but i guarantee you that those people are fulfilled and happy you know what i mean um not all of them but you get what i'm saying i'm i'm curious to hear it i always like to challenge people um, do you think with you saying the statement that uh, you uh you can't do it that uh, you want to show that p you can do it because you did it with uh, the circumstances that you had. Do you think that can have 
a negative effect to the viewers more than a positive and they will think maybe that they want they can't do it and maybe they are have they're just good in art and they cannot do whatever it's pressure and they're going to try and then feel bad with themselves and then they're going to be a bit depressed and think that there is something wrong with them do you think there is more consequences to that to paint this picture that you yeah that you paid that anything is possible when you uh, do this i don't think it's negative i think it's genuinely true i heard a quote from kanye recently he said there's two people the man who thinks he can and the man who thinks he can't they're both right meaning if you think that you cannot do something you can't if you think that you can i know that you can do it i am not saying that everybody can build a 10 million dollar company but i know that everybody is capable of getting to that point it's just a matter of putting the effort in learning the skills and doing it now you know some people have circumstances that prevent them from that like i i don't know exactly what it's like uh back in cyprus you've been to places all around the world and you've seen people that don't even have access to internet so for me to say anybody maybe is a little ignorant but you know i think i think most people can can accomplish this okay but uh, it's not like i just ex- like to explore ideas yes. so it was not coming from a bad place uh, uh, yes of uh, course so okay cool so moving on to uh, the you said that you want to do youtube to inspire entrepreneurs yes and what's next with your youtube channel what do you want where do you want to take it because it's interesting now you came to a point that you uh, what you do explain what you do a bit with your videos for people that they never watch kind of your recent videos when that you said that you are, you are packaging them better yeah the way i describe my channel is that i'm documenting my journey as an entrepreneur and sharing the stories of entrepreneurs all around the world documenting your journey as an entrepreneur and sharing the stories of entrepreneurs around the world that's interesting and what's the future of your channel you think and of your brand and what stuff that you want to tap in the future um i don't see myself pivoting to something like brand new i want to continue doing what we're doing but i want to keep upping the level and the quality of what we're doing there's an infinite amount of i'm not infinite but there's an high 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 number of people around the world that have amazing stories and incredible businesses that they built that i can bring light to most of those guys aren't famous nor have you ever heard of them before and they want a platform to talk about it and for me i'm planning on continuing this journey as on of entrepreneurship for the rest of my life so as long as i can continue documenting mine and sharing my story i'm good i just want to keep getting better at it I just want to keep making better videos. I want to become a better storyteller. I want to become a better editor. I want to get better with my team actually and, and have a bigger team even. Um, just just want to keep getting better. That's the thing that gets me excited the most is like improvement. Watching the new video and being like, wow, like this was good job team. All right, let's do it better next week, you know? So I was uh, speaking with Nas Daily. I don't know if you know him. Yeah, yeah, big dog. Yeah, I know Nas. He's killing it. And he was telling me that... Uh, what's the one of the biggest impact that we can have as creators is to bring light to people let's say there is a person there is one billion people in india and there is a one person that is the next whatever the ceo of google now it's from india sundar pindar what is his name Mm -hmm. and there is a lot of people and they don't have these opportunities that we have uh, uh, in the United States and all these uh, fortunate people, uh, opportunities that we have. Yeah. And the one person to go and share his story, how he started a business there and he made the best franchise hotel in India, yes. that bringing light to that and showing to all the world and to Indian people and all this stuff that this guy did it and bringing light to him yes. that's one of the most uh, to those countries that's the most effective way to have impact nas daily said yes so, i i agree imagine what that does to a 14 year old man or a boy in india watching that video that you know watch a episode of shark tank one time and wants to be a business owner now he's like wow i i i might be able to do that and that might be the spark that creates the next you know elon musk of india or the next billionaire you know like to have that power i agree is the ultimate thing i 
you know, I feel like the greatest human act is to inspire. I feel like if we can uplift each other by sharing stories, then we are doing a great job. You know, being able to uplift people and inspire people is the ultimate goal above all else. And I, I think, you know, your content does that very well. I, I hope that my content can continue to do that for many years because that that's the thing that, that I feel the best about. Talk about the dark side of being a creator because... Yeah. It's not all, always good. Yeah. There is a, times that you had recently a video that didn't got a lot of views. Yeah. And like uh, comparison to all your videos was a failure. So, um, and not only that, as a failed video, like all the dark side of relationships that people want to use you, that people want to do. Yeah, all stuff. I'm curious always to hear people talk about this. Yeah, I mean, for me... Because people think that life is amazing when you have 500,000 subscribers. <laughs> yeah, right, like, you're lit. Like, uh, <laughs> Now, for me, being a creator, there are maybe a little bit of dark moments. I think the darkest moments come from when you pour your heart out into a piece of content and you have the highest level of conviction that it's one of your best pieces of work and it gets a terrible reaction from the audience. Or worse, no reaction, low views. But... You have to just accept that that's kind of part of the process. You know what I mean? I'm not going to pivot here and just start talking about that, but that's where I'm trying to get to of just accepting that sometimes your videos are not going to be, you're not going to hit every time. It's just what it is. Like if you're, if you're in any field, you're going to have some misses. Now, I would say the only other thing that I can think of when it comes to the dark side of being a creator is once you start to get some traction and once you start to get views and build an audience, it comes along with this like a little bit of pressure to now continue to provide videos at this quality that you are known for. So if you make your best video and the quality is just through the roof, people now expect you to bring that quality every single time. That's why, you know, I pray for somebody like Eric. I love Eric. I think he's an awesome guy. The quality that they push on every video I imagine that he feels that a little bit like he can't make a regular video ever again. And I think that kind of gets him excited as it does for me, too. But on the same side of excitement or on the flip side of excitement, Wait, is it? Yeah, sure. is like, OK, you know what it's like, too. Your ideas are out there, man. Like you really push yourself. So now you're like, if I'm going to make a video, it has to be up here. I can't just do so you feel that pressure a little bit but pressure is spoken around with a negative connotation and i feel like it can be flipped into a positive because ultimately pressure is what makes diamonds pressure is that thing that pushes <laughs> you to go to that next level like without the pressure what is the alternative like flat line like of course you could say the alternative is like a flow like you're just coasting through type state. But you think Ryan Trahan felt pressure on the penny challenge? I think so. And how did that do? <laughs> yeah, it was... And how do you think he felt after? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. You know? So ultimately, I, I do feel some pressure. And I think if there was anything, the thing that I sit alone and talk about with my friends about, about maybe the dark side is like that feeling of you posted your best video ever. Right after you hit that publish button, it comes with a little wave of like, can you do it again? <laughs> can, if you work so hard on a video, can you do it again? Yeah. <laughs> can you do it again the next week? Can yeah. You can you do it again? better than yeah. last time? <laughs> and what do you mean? Yeah. 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 You guys started to understand a bit of the vibe that we, we feel. But uh, can you talk a bit more about your relationships in this space and if you find that a bit of with some dark side or if it's all amazing and beautiful and all this. Stuff. No, man, relationships are the thing that I'm the most grateful for in this lifetime. I have some of the most amazing friends. I cannot be more grateful in this life for anything than the family and the friends that I have. I mean, like it, it blows my mind sometimes, you know, um, a moment that I had yesterday that just shocked me was um, last year I met Eric. And I was a fan of his. So I came up to him I, as a fan. And, hey, man, nice to meet you. I'm in creator now. Da, 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 da. All right. Nice to meet you, bro. Have a great day. Like very casual. This year I, I go up to him 
and it is like, yo, Jordan, what's up, man? Like, how are you doing, bro? Like, I've been loving the videos, bro. I've been watching your videos. I'm like, what the hell? And then I go to Ryan Trahan, gives me a big hug. Yo, Jordan, like, how are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> I'm not saying this to like, you know, say whatever, but like the fact that I am able to have these friends and, you know, let's forget about the famous people. Like, I have friends in just all different areas of life that I'm so grateful for. Like, I, I just, like, I don't even know how to put it into words, man. Like, my friends and you as well, uh, you have helped me so much. Like I said it already, I'm going to repeat it again. If you were not in my circle of friends, I would not have the amount of subscribers I would today, nor would I feel as confident about the future of my channel. I mean, this guy literally called me a month ago and literally broke down my entire channel like in the in the best way possible. And the changes that we implemented afterwards gave a solid boost in my next video. No, come on, don't say that. Like, I, I did that. You know why I did that. So it was not like I was the <laughs> super nice guy. So don't bro, paint a picture bro, that I'm nicer than The question that. you asked me was my relationships. <laughs> and to be honest, I, I have like, I, I have the best circle ever. And I am so big on relationships. I try to take care of everybody in my life. You know, like I was able to help you out a little bit. Um, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to talk about that. So I... Uh, it's i was going through, through some difficult times the last past uh, eight months so like you described when you were in los angeles doing some mistakes and like trying to first time that you got money in your lives in your life so i went through that similar process the last eight months so i received money i was trying to spend a lot more than i should have spent into on videos on growing the team and making some wrong investments in the wrong mm -hmm. ways not that i was buying stuff and like shoes or stuff i never bought anything for for me and stuff but it was all for the business but uh and i got to some uh time that i, I needed money i needed like thirty thousand dollars for me to be able to go for the next month and i asked you and you gave me ten thousand dollars for the thing i asked you for ten thousand dollars and you gave me and you were not like uh ah give me not even called me about it and you never said anything about it so uh I, i'm so grateful about the, that help that you did and that shows how you care about your relationship and i love you for that and i told you a million times i always yeah. express my gratitude but i just wanted to put it out there yeah. and i think this is the interesting stuff for you guys that for you to get inside of exactly how we do in our lives as raw as it gets like mistakes that, that like yeah like vulnerable moments yeah. that we have no i love so. you too man and i take care of all my friends you know i buy gifts for everybody i'm always like paying you never bought me a gift though well, <laughs> you know, I saved the channel. No, <laughs> nah, man. But listen, it's just one of those things that um, I appreciate more than the money, more than the fame, or whatever. Because I know that, let's say it all came crashing down, these relationships that I built, I know that they're there. Maybe not everybody gonna and, stick around, and, but and, I know. And who how will. you choose the right people to invest your time uh, in, because you don't build a relationship with anybody. I assume that wants to be the relationship yeah. with you. What you are looking to friends and like how you take care of this. Well, I think I don't. I don't really give it like some more. I don't give it a lot of conscious thought. I'm not like, hmm, I'm gonna be friends with this guy because of this, this, and this. It's really off of feel. I can get a good feel for somebody after spending time with them, if their intentions are real, if they actually care about me. And maybe I don't have the best feel in the world, but because of the bad experiences I've had with people in the past and because of some of the shady people I've met in my life, I have an okay radar. So, you know, I think just having social awareness helps me a lot. Um, but that being said, I mean, I don't know, man, maybe some of the people around me aren't, aren't as genuine, but... I'm not saying that's the case because I, I, I know who's around me. I know who's real. Um, but again, that's not one of those things that like I have like a, a process or like I can explain it to you. It's, it's really off a of feel. Interesting. Yeah. I have a process. Okay. <laughs> and it's, I think, effortless relationship that it happens naturally. Yeah. That's what I mean by the feel. Like it shouldn't feel like you have to like, should I be friends with this guy? Like. Bro, when we linked up, it was very like, okay, Phidias is dope. Like, you know, I, yeah. I like this guy. We can hang out again. 
You know what I mean? You remember how we met? Yeah. <laughs> you, I was, I was ha- giving shakes, hand shakes to celebrities, and you said, "Yeah, you can come over." And I had no money back there. Yeah. You, know, you can stay over at my house as well. And like, I remember that time that we had those long conversations about YouTube and all this stuff. And I, it surprised me when I, I find a person that listens to me and asks questions with a lot of seriousness, like. You were asking like you were absorbing. We had like probably three hour conversation. You yeah. were asking, "What do you think about this? What do you think about this?" And we were talking about YouTube and the, oh, the interesting thing is like after that you started implementing immediately all of the, course all the stuff that we were saying. So that's where I understood that this guy and you. I was not a hundred percent sure that that you are going like. I, I love you and all this stuff but slowly course, slo- here, you know? s- slowly slowly evolve, th- th- seeing each other actions and all this stuff and like catching up here and there that slowly evolved too. that's what it's about man so uh, I want you to t- tell me about uh, some philosophical questions now what do you think is the meaning of life and later I will ask are you afraid of death the meaning of life Can I say, I, I don't want to answer that for everybody. I could tell you what I think the meaning of, of my life is at this stage. I feel like the meaning of my life is to focus on my craft and continuing mastering my craft, continuing to love and build stronger relationships with my family and my friends, and to continue to inspire people with my story and with the other stories around the world. For me, that's what I feel it is. Um, I, I feel like it's so hard for me to say the meaning of life for all humans is if I knew that I would be God, okay. you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, and also above all else, like to enjoy the experience because we have a finite amount of time here on this earth. And before we know it, we're going to be all old and wrinkly and the money and stuff won't even matter anymore. Um, so really just to find some enjoyment in it all because you get too caught up in this money fame game you're gonna lose the whole purpose of the life you know it's like you're gonna lose it all you're, it's like you're gonna get everything you wanted and then you're gonna miss out on what you actually needed are you afraid of death A little bit. Can you elaborate? I don't want to die at the age of 24. I'm not afraid of the idea of the fact that we're all going to die. A little bit. But I don't want to die right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to I wanna live life, man. I want to I wanna be here for as long as I possibly can. So, with that being said, um, maybe I'm afraid of an early death but who's to say what is early there is no timing to that whole thing um yeah i'm not a philosopher so i don't have these like nice concise like <laughs> answers for you like no it's uh, not a problem you cannot be a, in everything good in life so yeah i'm not saying that your uh, your answers were wrong or there is no wrong answer and exploring ideas is interesting look i feel like this. for me i feel like for me to completely eradicate my fear of death i have to become stronger in my faith i think the fear of death comes from the idea that upon death is pure nothingness and blackness and eternal darkness. I think that would be where the fear of death would come from. And I think that if you explore religion and you explore faith a little deeper, that there may be more peace to find in the idea. What's your relationship with all these things? With uh, religion, God? I have a strong relationship with God and I very much believe in God. At the current moment, I wouldn't identify myself as any specific religion because I've studied a little bit of not all of them, but of Buddhism, of Christianity, of Islam. And I think that there is a lot of good lessons to be shared in all of them. So ultimately, this is an area of my life that I'm still exploring. And I think that as I find more clarity on this, I could be an even more happier individual. Um, I, as a child, I used to run from the idea of religion because I felt as if it was something that was being forced upon me and it wasn't properly explained to me. You know, we would hear these anecdotal stories that are shared in the Bible and 
as a child, I was expected to understand them as truth and as the reality. And I think that that hurt my initial impression of the whole thing. But now as an adult, I can understand that these stories are meant to be lessons for you to follow, to understand what the principles are of life and being a decent human being. So this is an area of my life that I'm still improving and I'm still trying to explore more. Do you believe that is God above us watching in a form of what? And like, what do you believe in a higher power? There is power. What do you believe? Exactly? Personally, I feel like God is inside. I feel like we all have that inside of us. I feel like there are two forces inside of us. I feel like when people discuss God, I feel like they're speaking about this positive force inside of their selves. I feel like when people speak about the devil, they're typically speaking about this negative form inside of themselves. And if you look at modern religion, a lot of the things that they're preaching and, and telling you to do are positive actions that lead you closer to God. Love joy, discipline, these things make you feel better. They make you feel happier, which brings you closer to God. Whereas fear, doubt, these things bring you closer to the devil, which brings you closer to a dark side of your mind. So my take on it is that I think that we have that inside of us. And I think that religion teaches us how to harness the powers to get us closer to the forces that we're going for, which, you know, we want to, we want to get closer to God, uh, without being too close. because that would be the, the end of it all. You know, <laughs> do you think you are black? Do you think it's harder to become successful in business being black or harder to become successful on YouTube being black? I think because I am an online entrepreneur, it's irrelevant on the internet. Nobody knows you're a dog. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody knows like on the internet. What do you race. mean nobody knows you are a dog? I'm just saying it's like a, it's like a joke. Like nobody would be able to know if it was a dog typing on the computer. Okay. Like nobody could tell if you're white, black, Asian, girl, female, transgender, oh, running your business. It, got it, you know got what I'm trying it, to say? It, it, yeah. So in the business sense, it has not been harder for me. I think if I was trying to climb the ladder of like corporate Wall Street, I think that there could have been some disadvantages. That being said, though. Um, you know, society has changed in many ways. Some of the most successful people in the world are black. So it's not like, you know, we're at this crazy disadvantage like we once were, but because of the years that my people had to go through, um, you know, all different types of trauma, I think it's deep. Uh, I'm curious, why do you find them as my people, as, uh, for example, it's not my people, it's your people? Black people, the people that look like me. Okay. The reason why, you know, we might feel as if the, the powers to be are against us is because I mean, bro, just, just 70 years ago, just 100 years ago, times were very different for people with my skin color. Like, I'm mixed. My mom is white. My dad is black. But guess what? It doesn't matter. 100 years ago, nobody would look to see if there was a percentage of white in me. I would be drinking from the different water fountain. I wouldn't get to go to the same school as the white kids. I probably wouldn't even be able to get to school, you know? So um, I think those things are still rooted inside. And I think that's why a lot of people feel like there's a disadvantage. But for me, man... I haven't seen like a crazy like challenge, uh, extra challenge being black. Do you think it's helping? In YouTube, I actually think it has helped me a little bit because for, and I'm going to say this again, for the people that look like me, they didn't have somebody that was young that they can look up to in the business world. So, I yeah, uh, for example, what's his name? The Graham Stefan uh, and the other guy that he does amazing. Andre Biaheza. Biaheza. All these people are white, privileged uh, American boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Biaheza is not American, but he looks American, you know. Oh, but, well, where is he from? Um, his, his name is like Vladimir. So oh, like, okay. He's not American, <laughs> but yes. Um, That's right. You get what I'm saying, though, right? <laughs> so I think in YouTube, it actually has played to my strength. A lot of times when people do approach me on the street, like uh, a lot of people that I meet are black, and I love that. 
Um, but I, I love all the people, man. I, I grew up around white people. I grew up around black people. I grew up around Asian people. Like, I, I love all the people. What do you think about all this uh, controversy that becomes with black and, like, for example, uh, there is, for example, uh, a word that Joy Rogan said about the, in the podcast and people were trying to cancel him. How do you feel about this movement, this uh, stuff? Joe Rogan doesn't hate black people. That clip was taken out of context. I've watched many interviews with Joe Rogan and black people, so I know he doesn't hate black people. Personally, I don't get involved too much in like the, the media agenda about whites against blacks. I think more than anything, the media is just trying to continue to divide us even further. Making these things into stories does not bring us closer, that's for sure. So... Uh... You think uh, w the future, what do you think? Uh, it's not going to be any here. There is, uh, I'm curious to see if there is places in the world still that they have this uh, black being a problem and not having opportunities. Especially, I think, in my country as well because and, and I, I saw that people were not, I grew up not around black people. Yeah. So, just by naturally being different, so I think the people that were black had, I had only two black girls in my school. Wow. So, I, were, I will say, like, if, if there is any places in America where there's a little bit of a disadvantage, it's actually in, in, in some of the hoods and, and some of these lesser income neighborhoods. And it's not they have a disadvantage because they're black. It's because the disadvantage is built into the community that they're from. The schools are not as good as the schools in other neighborhoods. The restaurants are not as good as in the other neighborhoods, meaning you're having people that are getting a lesser quality education, eating lesser quality food, not having necessary But access. that's with white kids as well. You have neighborhoods. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But it's disproportionately black. What do you mean by that? Meaning the majority would be black. I'm curious to see data on that. I Don't quote <laughs> me on that, but I, I grew up in neighborhood like this. So I can speak from my personal experience. So you you mean that you grew up in a, there is a lo, a lot of poor neighborhoods and they are black for the majority. I'm not saying the majority of poor neighborhoods in America are black. I don't have this. No, you are saying that there is a problem with poor neighborhoods that they are black. What I'm saying is a lot of the black communities in America have this disadvantage. And you could probably find a lot of data to support that. Or just go ahead and take a drive in Los Angeles to Compton. Or go ahead and take a drive in Fort Myers over to Martin Luther King Jr. And go hang out around there and you'll see what it's like. You know, um, So this is not something that I'm not, a, I'm not an American expert. I'm not a historian or anything like that. But I, this is just things that I've seen with my own eyes. So, Okay. So um, I'm curious to hear your advice about business now uh okay so what's your advice that you give for to people for business because you've been come on you've been very successful in business <laughs> yeah look i think i think the, the the number one thing i could tell people about business right is nowadays you go on the internet and you see a hundred different ways to make money i think the number one thing i could tell somebody is to pick one path okay and just stick with that path so Absorb as much information as you can about that. Potentially find a mentor, somebody that is making a little bit more money than you that can kind of show you how they're doing it. And just stick with it. Because I think the biggest mistake people make when they're trying to start a business right now in 2022 is, or whatever year they're watching this, is they are jumping ship too quick. They'll start a, a, a hustle or a business for two months and then on to the next one. Well, don't you think that's beneficial in a way for you to try different things and understand who you are and what you like? Yes, but I think you will never be able to get one of those things to be truly successful until you burn the bridges and commit to that thing. Interesting. If I did not try all the things that I had tried uh, through the early years, I think I would have been a little bit at a disadvantage. So I do think that there is some uh benefit to testing a variety of things but when did i ultimately become successful when i focused on one thing so you're and then when did i become unsuccessful again when i started trying to do five different things at once and then when did i make it work again when i focused on one thing so this has been the proof in my life you know and now you see it with youtube when i put the majority of my attention on youtube it started to work 
So your advice is focus on one thing and try to get the right people around you to learn from them. Yeah, the communities are out there. The the education is out there for free on YouTube. So I'm a kid now, 16 year old or whatever, 25 year old that I want yeah. to make money. Like what's how I'm going to find the right community to enter and how I'm going to find that friend that is a bit better than me. Because where I was probably there were not a lot of people like that I knew that probably three, four people around me were like, and my uncle, my brother. So not so much access to people that were successful. Yeah. I mean, I have a free discord um, inside of there. There's a bunch of other entrepreneurs just going to start on their journey, but not just me. There are many other people that have these Discord servers that you guys can get into. I also think that YouTube itself is a community. Seeing other entrepreneurs on there, young, middle-aged, old, that are making money is a community in and of itself. The comment section is a community of itself. You can leave comments saying, hey guys, follow me on Instagram, I'm just getting started with this. Um, I think that it's actually pretty easy to find people that are trying to do it as long as you're looking for reddit is another place where there's reddit drop shipping there's reddit marketing agency there's reddit facebook ads like the communities are out there like it's not hard to find the communities you don't have to pay five thousand and join the war room you know to get into a good community these days <laughs> <laughs> for real though there's a lot of good free communities out there so and of course you can also drop some money to, to get into some some better paid communities so find that, for example, if I want to become a YouTuber, I pay, for example, in the Arak course to get in. I find to surround myself with other creators, start talking with them and like work my way. The reason why I met you is because I joined a community of creators. Yeah. I, and meeting you allowed me to accelerate the growth of my channel. So... It all comes back to community at the end of the day. So, well, you know, my advice to business owners or people that want to start a business again is pick one path and join a community of people that are on that path so you can really work alongside them to get it done. Well, okay, that's, that's a very useful advice. But how, what other things you found important, like, for example, books, exercising, meditation? Did you find anything else apart from just sit on yourself that yes. uh, helped you? I'm glad you asked that because I do think it's very important if you're trying to be a successful entrepreneur to optimize your life, meaning to actually care about your health. If you're eating crappy food all day, if you're consuming TikTok four hours a day, if you are, you know, all night long, your Master brain, baby. your brain <laughs> is going to get wrecked. And guess what? If you're going into the competition of business against uh, little Jimmy that is reading two hours a day. Goes little Jimmy, Mr. Beast. Exactly. <laughs> AKA Mr. Going to the gym every single day, uh, reading a book for 30 minutes a day, spends his night actually watching educational stuff on YouTube and does the work on his business. He's going to run laps around you all day. He's going to be laughing at you. You're going to be walking. He's going to be sprinting around the laps. And I found that the most successful people are taking care of themselves. They are not out of shape. They are not consuming crap content all day long. And in the beginning, it's more important than ever because you are already at a disadvantage because you don't have money. So you need to get all the cards stacked on your favor and optimizing your health, optimizing your brain. These are the best two things you could do to get started. So I'm glad you asked that. I am a huge proponent of that. When, when I was uh, in this whole journey, and even to this day, this is a top priority for me, above the YouTube, above the business. You touched on a lot of things. But you said taking care of yourself, but you touched a bit on books. But give us some more. What, what you found very helpful things in your Definitely life? Definitely working out. Like you have to have physical activity in your life, whether that's actually lifting weights or you go for runs or you train fighting. You need to have physical activity in your life, especially if you're trying to build an online business, because listen, man, it's depressing sitting and looking at a computer all day. It's good for your brain to have physical fitness. I train pretty much every day. As I've been filming this video here at Vid Summit, I ain't been at the gym. But when I'm back at home, I'm training pretty much every day. Also, education is important, like more than anything. More than reading about the actual business you want to learn, I recommend reading some basic books about, you know, philosophy. Like uh, one of my favorite authors is Ryan Holiday. If you've ever heard of him. Yes. Yeah. He has a very good book called The Obstacle is the Way. I would really recommend that book. 
um, ego is the enemy. You know, there, I, I don't want to turn this into like too much books because I find if I sit here and recommend books, nobody's going to go and read them. So like, it's just like, no, this, uh, some people will go. Yeah. But <laughs> no, look, if there was one book I would recommend people to start with, it would be called the slight edge. And it touches on exactly what we're talking about today. It's the reason why certain people go on to get results and other people's don't. And it's because of the slight edge. And this book kind of teaches you how to get that edge. So as you described a bit before, we are here at VIT Summit, which is one convention. You said that you saw Ryan Trahan today, NRAG, and you felt very good that these people knew you and they were very acceptive to you making a video with them. Yeah. And yeah, tell me more, uh, like, what did you learn here and what is your take of moving on in the future? This year, my biggest takeaway was actually from um, the talk that Eric had. And, you know, he was sharing the fact that um, as you're growing on YouTube, the most important thing to think about if you want to have this as a career is longevity. And he discussed a couple of different things to actually maintain that longevity. And one of the things he shared with me, it's probably not going to be that relevant to the audience, but, you know, I'm just sharing f from what I learned, is that the top creators, the people that stick around the longest, are the ones that are actually creating the trends. You can get pretty far on YouTube by riding trends, but when you are the one that is creating the trend that the other YouTubers are hopping on, that's the point where you cement yourself as the one at the top of that industry. And I think in the finance space, I have the ability to do that. In a way, we've already started creating some trends that we've already seen people jumping on. But I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, you know, I will say transparently this year, I focused a little more on creating my video than I did to sit and learn and absorb value as much as I did last year. Um, I also learned that a lot of people watch my videos. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, that was cool. I know that's not the answer you wanted, but no, no, a lot of people, a lot of like, bro, last year I came to vid summit. I, one guy came up to me and was like, what's up, man? Love the videos. All right. See ya. I think we met like a hundred people this year or something. How did that feel? Pretty good. In what way? What was the conversations that you had with them? It was frustrating. It felt, it felt really good, you know, because it, I, I get uh, approached by people almost every day in Miami. So, like, I'm kind of used to it at this point. It felt good because the people that come up and say hi, I'm not known for, like, a joke or, like, a meme or something. Like, people come up and they show respect and we have real conversations. And a lot of times they're business owners themselves, relatively successful business owners. So, like, it showed me what my audience is like. And I love my audience. I love the people that watch the videos. I feel like we attract an awesome group of people to to the videos, you know? It's interesting. Uh, for example, there were some people in the conference that they do brands, um, um, pranks. Yeah. And they get a lot more views than me and you. And mm -hmm. probably nobody even cares and nobody even wants to talk with them. And yeah, nobody, they don't want to get pranked. Uh, not only to get pranked, but if they get uh, approached, it's not the way that you got approached. Oh, I respect the business. It's like, oh, how do you get followers? How do you get views? Or like... It's not that, uh, and I felt that uh, as well here. People are come to me and like say, oh my God, I, I love your energy. I love whatever the thing you put in the videos. You are well, you are doing the craziest things, uh, you're whatever, inspiring. And that's, I think, an interesting way that, uh, uh, and uh, my big, uh, I want to share my biggest takeaway. Yeah, tell me, because you were really listening to like most of the talks. Uh, Ryan Trahan spoke and he said something uh, that was really interesting and especially because I was doing uh, as I told you I was uh, not doing great in money the last couple of six months I felt that I was doing YouTube for money to recover from the position that I was Yeah. and Ryan Trahan said that do the videos as, I'm not sure if he understood how deep what he said was and how and if he meant that but this is what I interpret mm -hmm. he said do the videos and consider them as gifts to the audience, to the audience. and um, that was like a big thing for me I was like okay yeah 
okay i'm going to put a lot more effort i'm going to make a lot better videos i'm going to treat them a lot better not just to trick and get more views monthly views not just to go and do to make people happy to bring joy to them like we're delivering the joy the best gift ever yeah no i i actually fully agree with that ryan's talk was very special and he even shared at a point where he felt like he was creating just for profit and why he was making a lot of money at that time, but he was literally at one of the lowest moments of his life. And that shift is, is, is very important. And, I, and I'm excited to see the, the change in your content from that new perspective. Because ultimately, when I watch your videos, I smile. I've cried from watching one of your videos. That's and good. I told you that, you know? Yeah, that's good. Um, so, like, <laughs> that's what you bring to people. You cried on the on the video that we had uh, uh, I, uh, on the Africa video that yeah. I, I went there in the worst poorest country. By the way, I'm going to leave the link on the description on that fundraiser for people. I went to Africa and we're raising twenty thousand dollars to go and back and make a change in the worst poorest country. And I'm thinking a lot of ways to spend that money. Uh, that we raised, we raised so far more than thirteen thousand dollars. Nice. We're getting closer to the twenty thousand dollars, and uh, ways that I'm going to spend those money. I'm thinking about it. I'm talking with the smartest people in the world that I know to give me advice. But one of the ways that I'm thinking about is to go in an orphanage and give uh, people because only ten percent of the people has access to Wi-Fi. In give computers, give Wi-Fi access, give tablets, phone to mm -hmm. an orphanage they are in the worst poorest country in Burundi. And yeah, if you guys want to donate, I will leave a link on the description of the Go and Find Me. I'll definitely donate. Yeah. So, okay. Moving forward with uh, the, now that we touch on this, I'm curious and we touch a bit before on this. I'm very curious. I'll ask always the creators that I meet uh, in this podcast, what, how you think we can, do more impact in the world uh, with our, because we have platforms like as you saw people are real mm. people not views uh, so people will have something uh, how we you we have energy in our hands as my describe as mm -hmm. my teacher describes it where you think is better to allocate this for impact and making a uh, word i guess it just depends on how you define impact i feel like you can make an impact by leading people in the right direction by showing them a way you can also make an impact by going to africa and literally hand delivering computers to children you know uh, i think impact can be defined in many different ways the way i think i can provide the most impact is by inspiring through these stories that i share of course i could donate a bunch of money to charity and I could do fundraising and stuff like that. And that is impact as well. But I don't think it always has to be that because that person that we inspire to start their business could go on to make a million dollars and then they end up donating $10,000 to your charity. And it's like the impact doesn't always have to be direct. Um, but I think creators as a whole, you know, maybe take a lesson from what you were saying and think maybe how can we create less selfishly and how can we create more with the viewer at the top of our mind and think about them always first. Brother, I want to say that you are a big inspiration in my life. I'm very happy. I have such an amazing person that really he's happy to be my friend yeah yeah <laughs> in my life and i learned so much stuff from you i love you and i'm happy we discussed a lot of things about philosophy to yeah. africa and thank you for doing everything definitely man thanks for having me on the show i appreciate you a lot man and subscribe guys subscribe